What if I told you some of the best Indian food in LA is next to this busy highway, at a gas station, inside a convenience store? This guy certainly likes it. Let's see how this plate of Indian burritos ended up near the Dorito aisle. At the Bombay Frankie Company, you'll find Hiram and his staff making Indian food at a gas station. Hiram, care to explain? Okay. The reason why we chose this particular gas station is because our family is actually in the gas station and giving us our business. We had this space free for quite a while and we thought, well, what a great launch pad. Traditionally, what you might find is unhealthy, non-fresh fare. And when you're coming across something that's not only fresh, but it's true to the most raw ingredients. So when we start with that completely off the wall pairing, you're gonna be starting from a really low point. So all you can go is high and higher, and we're trying to just set the bar really high. Since they've opened, the Bombay Frankie Company has received both critical and commercial success. Definitely, our most popular item is the Frankie. In Bombay, sometimes it can be a rolled up sandwich, sometimes it can be an enclosed sandwich. What we try to do is make it ultimately relatable to the LA market and make it really similar to a burrito. It's one of the best things you've ever tried. People say never mix business with friends or family. I say don't knock it until you try it. The key members of the Bombay Frankie Company is my sister Priyanka. Please hold. Our esteemed chef, Mr. Kamaljeet Singh, and our staff. Having someone come in for the first time who's never tried Indian food and are completely engulfed by the experience, they truly realize that not only is it Indian food coming from a gas station and being served in a gas station, but that they would try it elsewhere. So by preserving traditional ingredients, traditional preparations, traditional recipes, we're staying true to not only ourselves, but the region of the food for which we serve. And we want to make sure that you're leaving feeling like you got the true experience. Getting your car washed is normally a bit of a chore, but here in Northridge, people are getting more car washes than necessary, and that's because of something delicious lurking inside. They always say, what? Inside a car wash? How come? What happened? How did you get here? It's uh, really funny because nobody would think that we are here. I'm Lillian and I'm the owner of Lillian's Bread and Sweets and we're located inside a car wash. Lillian opened her restaurant in the car wash for one simple reason. She knew that being located in a car wash would provide foot traffic and some new clients. When you walk into cruisers, you are confronted by the smells of Little Tree air fresheners, steering wheel covers, and other car cleaning paraphernalia. But you are also confronted with the smell of home-cooked Filipino food. Filipino food is simple but delicious. We eat a lot of pork, chicken, and beef. And rice, of course. We cannot eat our food without rice. We are famous for our halo-halo. Our halo-halo, they always say, is the best in the West. <laughs> it is to die for. As someone who ate three halo-halos in 24 hours, I can attest, it's really great. Filipino food tends to be overlooked internationally, but it's gearing up to be the next big thing in the culinary world. On average, in a day, uh, we sell about uh, 300 meals. Cooking is really a passion for me, yeah. Because if you're not passionate with what you're doing, then you won't be able to succeed. I'm really so grateful and thankful that I have my team, because without them, I am nothing. I think that's uh, my secret. So the next time you treat yourself to a car wash, you can splurge on more than just a pine-scented air freshener. You can splurge on that empanada-scented plate of Filipino food, guaranteed to make your car smell better than a little air freshener ever could. Great big story, we in here. Mama, we made it. Everybody always say that. I think it's better than my mom's. I think my grandma couldn't even do this. They think we, we got our grandmas cooking for us. No, this is us. We did that. Like, yeah, us young men. <laughs> Trap is, is take risks and prosper. 
And that's what we doing in here. So that's what we eat, it's Trap Kitchen. 15 shrimps in a bag, man. Trap Kitchen is, is a spot where you prepare products to be distributed underground. We just use that mentality with food. And we're a full-blown catering service. And you also can order for delivery during the week. My team consists of myself and three other guys. I call them my brothers, my boy AWOL, um, DJ Kev, and Bad News. We're a small team, but we get the job done all the time, you know? I mean, we always Crips and Bloods, you know what I mean? Doing that kind of stuff, of course, I'm getting arrested every other day for nothing. They shooting at us. So now, the only thing we worried about is some food burning up, like, or running out. That's it. I was talking to my mom. She's like, you gotta do something, son. I'm like, okay, well, what can I do? I seen the Corn on Blue commercial on TV. I'm like, damn, that look kind of cool. I could probably do something with that. I know, like, you can make good money cooking. I moved to Vegas, started culinary school, and that's where I began to practice my craft, you know? He really came in here from Vegas. He like, bro, what we gonna do? Like, we need some money. I said, wait, we can sell some food. Through Instagram, I, I was like posting my food, and people was like, oh, that looks so good, that looks great. And I was like, okay, now it's time for me to offer this food to the streets. Like how a, a, a D-boy pushes dope, you know what I'm saying? And it worked. The key to our success, we never gave up, man. Every day, that's all I think about is how can we improve our company? How can we improve our food? How can we improve the taste? Even though I'm mean, in the house trapping, I feel like it's a real restaurant. All Flavor No Grease is a new version of bringing unity to the community through food. Nobody has died on the street, no gunfire within the last like five years, for a fact. All right. There's a ceasefire and a peace treaty going on from the consensus of food on 108th Street. My name is Keith Garrett, and I am the owner of All Flavor No Grease. And will you look at me the whole time? Okay. Uh, so will you just give that to me one more time? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi. My next order. Chicken stick stick trip. All Flavor No Grease actually started out of my mother's kitchen. The way my mother made a taco was lettuce, tomatoes, cheese, sour cream, ketchup, hot sauce. So. That's the way I started. And then we transitioned into our food truck, which we are in now. The kind of food that I serve, I would have to put it under Americanized Mexican food. And the only reason why I say that is because I do serve tacos, burritos, quesadillas, and enchiladas, but I don't make them a traditional way. Like, no, nah, it's a whole different feel and flavor, baby. It's ready. When you really think about it, we're bringing together all flavors of people, from gang members to politicians, and there's no confrontation, no blood being spilled, there's no grease being spilled anywhere, but yet we still got all flavors here. I would love to go to the, the property areas and to just to let them know that you can make it. There is a such thing as hope, but you have to work. You gotta get your ass up and do something. To see 500 plus people pull up to my truck, it really makes me think about one person, and his name is For Real. Cause I'm so happy. <laughs> My name is Cecilia Chan. People said I brought Chinese food to America. Judo Chow brought French. Cecilia Chan brought Chinese.
This is uh, all my sister's sesame. In 1959, I came to San Francisco visiting my sister Sophie. <laughs> she lived at the edge of Chinatown. The first time I noticed the food, I said, is this a Chinese food? My sister said, yes. I look at the menu, chop egg fu yung. I'm originally born near Shanghai, and I say, I don't remember we tasted any of this in China. So my sister said, this is American Chinese food. I decided I want to introduce my Chinese food to USA. I opened the Mandarin in 1960, this is Mandarin, with the mayor, Masconi. The customer said, oh my goodness, the food are, tastes are totally different. A lot of dishes is that we never seen before. We had hot and sour soup. The lettuce cup, the pot sticker, picking up. I was the first one served in San Francisco. I didn't create that, but I introduced that to Americans, and now everybody has it. I met Alice one night. She came to the Mandarin and one thing and another. I'm a hummer. <laughs> I'm Alice Waters and I'm the owner of Chez Panisse Restaurant. I've known Cecilia almost 50 years. It's done. It's done. Cecilia's restaurant was incredibly important and so many people came there and learned and opened Chinese restaurants or talk cooking. You want the ginger juice. So this way, all the juice come out. Her food is very delicious. And if it is a little strange, she'll tell you a story about it and you'll want to try it. But every time I have a meal with Cecilia, I learn something. I don't get all the credit, but uh, I think I did something. People always say, you put this in the menu. I think Americans don't like it. I said, good food is good food. Doesn't matter you are American, I'm Chinese. If you put good food, I think everybody will like it. Don't you see? <laughs>